All right, guys, so I just did a video about how an entire CNN panel called out the Democrats and their hypocrisy on the fact that they are funding, actively funding Trump-backed MAGA candidates in the GOP primaries to potentially face them in the general election, thinking that they will have an easier chance of winning because the MAGA Trump-backed candidates are supposed to be extremists. Now, if you guys haven't seen that video, you should go watch it. Uh, however, um, one of the arguments that I made in that video is that um, the extremism of the Democrat Party is much more prevalent and in the face of the American people than that of the right and the Republican Party. And um, again, part of the reason why is because the extremism in the Democrat Party is mainstream. And this interview with Kamala Harris and progressive political commentator slash actor Brian Tyler Cohen really does highlight exactly what I'm talking about here as she's gonna discuss uh, some of the issues that Democrats have to answer to their voter base on uh, coming up in the midterms. And I wanna talk about a couple things that really highlight the extremism of the Democrat party, right? And how it is in fact mainstream. But before I get into that, I just wanna let you guys know, if you like my channel and you wanna support my channel, you can do so using the links in the description below. You support the Patreon, you support the PayPal, you support the merch. There are multiple ways to support the channel if you would like to do so. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into this clip, the first clip of Kamala Harris discussing the so-called don't say gay bill aka the parental rights and education bill uh in which she's gonna argue that teachers are being restricted from being able to love openly <laughs> take a look as we all know your your right to vote and the action of voting unlocks all the other rights including same-sex marriage including whether we're going to stand up against a law that says don't say gay basically restricting kindergarten through third grade teachers in Florida to be able to love openly and teach what they believe is important for people to understand. All these things are on the ballot. Wow. Incredible. Right. Absolutely incredible. First and foremost, I, I want to say this. Um, your voting rights are not under attack, right? That is a conspiracy. Okay. That is a falsehood that is being pushed by the Democrat party. Again, an another example of their extremism, pushing the idea that your voting rights are under attack, that the GOP is keeping you from voting is an extremist idea because it's just objectively not true. Uh, just look at what happened in Georgia during their primary in which they had a record turnout. Second of all, um, she's saying that the Florida's parental rights and education bill is keeping people from saying the word gay, which is, again, objectively not true, <laughs> right? Again, two false statements right there from the vice president of the United States. This is the party, guys, that claims they're against misinformation <laughs> however they love misinformation when it comes to spreading falsehoods to their base right because they believe that their base is dumb but let's get to the crux of what she's saying here the really disturbing part that really does highlight how extreme the democrats have become she's literally saying that we believe the democrat party that teachers have the right to talk with kids about their genitals that they don't like and sexuality because allegedly <laughs> that is what children need to know right if teachers feel like kids need to know that according to kamala harris they should have the right to teach them that i'm pretty sure she would not agree with that if i said that hey well a teacher feels like uh kids need to know the bible therefore they should have the right to teach them the bible right i'm pretty sure she would disagree with that i'm pretty sure that she would but when it comes to this religion right here right she's saying no no, no. teachers should be able to teach kids whatever they feel like kids should know that, that is what she's saying, and she's calling that being able to love openly, okay? When these things are resulting <laughs> in situations like this that are happening way too often in this country. Take a look. Okay, so it took a couple of days for me to make this TikTok um, without crying, because that's what I do. Um, please ignore the dog bone crunching behind me. Anyhow, um, one of my students uh, felt safe enough to share his pronouns with me. And when he did so, once the class knew that I knew, they all switched pronouns. They're second graders. Like I'm torn between being really, really happy to be a safe space and just absolutely furious that an entire group of second graders has to keep this secret from not safe people. Why are kids feeling unsafe? And furthermore, 
why does everyone talk about how, how are the kids going to understand? The kids can understand it. It's easy for them. It's the adults who have all of the frigging issues and hangups and bullshit. Kids are fine. Yeah, so Kamala Harris would fully endorse, right? She would fully endorse having a classroom full of second graders who are changing their pronouns and having their teacher support it and talk to them about it, okay? Again, Democrats aren't going to stop until every kid in America is talking like this. Hi, TikTok. I use she, they pronouns. And a fun thing about me is yesterday I came out as trans to my whole family. Hi. Hi. She use they, then pronouns. And something that you might not know about me is that I love flannels. Hi, TikTok. My name is Lolly. My pronouns are he, they. And a fun fact about me is that I have a girlfriend and my favorite animals are frogs. Hi, my name is Mars. I use it, it's pronouns. And I love pink and Legos. Yeah, that is exactly what the mainstream Democrat Party endorses, okay? Uh, not to mention the fact that, um, again, some of this stuff has become so disturbing that it has resulted in teachers getting arrested at alarming rates for openly loving their children too much, okay? But again, Democrats don't see a problem with this for whatever reason, right? They don't see a problem with where having these discussions that probably would be inappropriate to have among adults, really, okay? Especially in a workplace or, you know, some type of uh, public event or whatever, right? Um, they don't see that as been a problem, okay? But again, they say we're not the party of extremists. It's, it's the other people who believe in common sense and in reality, right, when it comes to these subjects. Again, it really blows my mind, okay? So the next part of this interview that I want to talk about uh, is Kamala Harris discussing Roe v. Wade being overturned. And uh, during this part of the interview, uh, essentially, she states that it is a problem that women are getting pregnant every day, uh, that they want to overturn the filibuster to codify Roe v. Wade into law, and that she wouldn't really give an answer in regards to whether or not she supports expanding the Supreme Court. Take a look. To protect a woman's right to choose. That's what we need. And thankfully, President Biden has said he will not let the filibuster get in the way of that becoming law. You know, listen, women are getting pregnant every day in America, and this is a real issue. And we need to act with a sense of haste about what is at play, what is at stake. And codifying Roe will be an important um, moment in terms of putting back in place protections for for the folks who are at risk right now because of what the court did in Dobbs just weeks ago. I think what we've got to do right now is deal with what we've got in front of us. And the reality is that we don't even have the votes in the United States Senate to codify Roe. And there is a way to impact that, which is to have a pro-choice Senate, which means we need to elect two more senators who are pro-choice to get that through. So we can have this discussion about, you know, other aspects of this issue, but but frankly, right now, I'm focused on what we have in front of us immediately in terms of the task at hand, in addition to what we need to do in the long term. And I agree with you, this is a part of a movement. I mean, the president has been clear that expansion of the court is not something that's on the table. So let's focus right now on what we need to do around winning this election with pro-choice you know, people and, you know, mostly Democrats, because the Republicans, um, for the most part, you know, in many ways, in terms of the leaders of the party have been unwilling to support this issue. Yeah. So let's break this down. Kamala Harris says that women are getting pregnant every single day and that this is an issue, right? It almost sounds like she's saying that as if it is some type of problem, right? This is a problem that we must solve. All these women getting pregnant. What are we going to do about it, right? As if, again, they, they see it as, as not a, a good thing that um, women are having babies and that life is being created, right? Again, the Democrats, uh, the way they view human life, right? it's almost like life doesn't have any sanctity to them, right? It's kind of scary, right? It, it really is, okay? Um, because I think that women getting pregnant every day is a beautiful thing. Now, some women shouldn't be getting pregnant, in my opinion, right? Uh, because they're raising kids in environments that are not good for children, and they're raising criminals, right? And detriments to society. But, you know, hey... You know, for the most part, I think pregnancy is beautiful. I think having a family is a beautiful thing. Something that Democrat Party never, ever, ever talks about. They never talk about the importance of family, right? So again, 
Kamala thinks that women getting pregnant every single day is an issue. Uh, and we must codify Roe v. Wade into law quickly so that we can terminate those pregnancies. Furthermore, she goes on to say that they want to repeal the filibuster, right? So Democrats are openly saying that we want to get rid of the filibuster, which in my opinion, considering how the filibuster has stood the test of time in Congress, right, for over, what, 150 years or something like that, um, trying to get rid of it now, uh, again, is an extremist position, right? These are the people that call Republicans extremists, but when they can't get what they want, let's just overturn uh, what we do in Congress. Let's just overturn a mechanism that we have in Congress to prevent the uh, majority from overrunning the minority without actually having a, a very large majority opinion. Let's just get rid of that, right? Because we can't win when it comes to democracy. Again, these people hate democracy they hate democracy they can't stand democracy okay especially when they can't get what they want right also on top of that um she doesn't give an answer in regards to expanding the supreme court what she does is that she places it on biden because between the two right president biden and kamala harris uh joe biden's supposed to be the guy that's closer to the center right he's supposed to be the more conservative democrat uh kamala's supposed to be the more progressive democrat and she knows that she can't come out here and say that she's against expanding the Supreme Court. So she doesn't give an answer on it. And she just puts it in Biden's lap and say, well, the president of the United States says that, you know, he doesn't want to expand the Supreme Court, right? That's not on the table. Okay. So when the woke revolutionaries come out to her for saying that she doesn't want to expand the Supreme Court, which is something that they want uh, them to do, uh, she can say, well, it's not me. <laughs> it's Joe, right? It's Joe. It's Joe Biden's the one that doesn't want to uh, expand the Supreme Court. I didn't really get a, give an answer on that because in the past, um, she has come out here and said that she is open to expanding the Supreme Court, right? So I find it fascinating some of the politics that have been played here in this interview. But again, the point of this video, guys, is to highlight that the Democrat Party, again, for as much as they want to talk about the Republican Party being a party of extremists, in my opinion, they, they hold the most extremist views in this country, okay? They want to tear down democracy when they can't get in their way, and they're totally fine with uh, children being indoctrinated in schools. They're totally fine with election conspiracies. They're totally fine with doing all the things that they claim that they're against uh, when they don't get their way. Again, it really does blow my mind that this is how far left the Democrat Party has gone in 2022. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.